Hello everyone and welcome. You know, soldering is a basic skill that all DIYers learn at some point. I've been soldering since I was young and I had a Radio Shack soldering station that lasted me for many, many years. After many years of use, sadly, it decided to stop working. Now, I've been very busy and didn't have time to do adequate research to find a good replacement soldering iron. So as a temporary fix, I decided to use a cheap Harbor Freight soldering iron for a while. But that didn't last very long. It was a terrible product and I wound up throwing it away. So finally, I decided to start looking around for a good quality soldering iron. Then recently, I got an email from a viewer asking me to review the Kesker STM32 T12 soldering station from Banggood. So that's what we'll be doing today. A viewer requested review. Now I ordered this soldering station and after a couple days it arrived. The packaging isn't anything special to look at, but that's not what matters. What matters is what's inside. So let's get into it. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews and helpful DIY projects, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product review video or DIY video. All right, so let's see what we have here. Like I said, the packaging is not anything special to look at. It came in a generic gray envelope. Throw that away. And let's unbox this baby and see what we get. All right, so when you get through all the packaging and stuff, this is what you get. You get the soldering station, you get the soldering handle, and you get three tips that come with it. You get a T12K, you get a T12 ILS, and a T12D24. These are the three that are available in this particular package. And there's many options available on that page, so I would say check it out first, read through all the description there, and pick which one is best for you. This is the package that I chose. This retails for $62.99, and there are discounts available on their website, so be sure to check that out first. And like I said, this is the Kesker STM32 T12 soldering station from Banggood, link in description below. And this is a close-up shot of the station right there. And it's an aluminum body. And there's the back of it. There's the plug where you plug it into the power. There is a 5-amp a fuse uh, to protect it. There's the on-off switch. And that's it. Very compact unit. The power supply on this is 24 volts, 5 amps. AC, anywhere from 100 to 240 volts. So it's basically a worldwide unit. They send it anywhere throughout the entire world. And one thing you notice is that First of all, there's no instructions, but it's fairly easy to understand everything you need to do with this. And there's no power cord. So you need to supply your own power cord. And the power cord is your basic computer type power cord. Your basic plug, this kind of thing plugs into the back. You should be able to have one of these laying around the house somewhere. You can pick that up and use it. That's what I'm using, an old power cord. If you don't have one, you can order one online. Be sure to get that. So when this, when this station arrives, you're ready to go. Now, the dimensions on this unit are very compact. It's only about five and a half inches long, three and a half inches wide, and about two and a half inches thick. So very, very compact. The display screen on here is 1.3 inches OLED display. And you have the controller button here, and you plug in the handle right over here. Very, very easy to do. The tin time on this is about eight seconds long. And it does uh, have three languages built into it. You can change it in the menu, English, Russian, and Chinese. Now, I'm not going to go into a huge uh, explanation about everything that this has because it has a menu built into it. I'll power it up in a minute, show you the menu. It does have a menu built into it. It has a lot of features to select in there. They're all pretty self-explanatory. If you're a novice and you really don't know what you're doing with soldering, you just basic soldering skills, I would say leave it as it is. It probably comes set up from the factory just fine, which is what I'm going to test right now to see exactly how it comes set up from the factory. But there are other videos that go into huge in-depth reviews as to the menu, everything in there, etc. I'm not going to bore you with all those details. I want to see how it performs right out of the box, right from the factory settings, how it'll perform for a novice that doesn't know everything about soldering. All right then, so then let's start getting this puppy set up. Like I said, let's see how good this performs right out of the box. Can you buy this as a novice, not knowing much at all about soldering, and start using it? That's what we intend to find out. And this has a pretty long handle to it. 
I don't think it's specified. Let me measure it. I'll tell you how long it is. Okay, so I measured it, and this is about 44 inches in length. So that'll give you quite a bit of room to maneuver. So then, this plugs into the controller, but we'll do that in just a moment. First of all, let's get one of the tips put in here, because this will start heating up right away, and I don't want to be touching it once it's warm. So let's see, let's start, this is a knife one. Let's start off with the conical tip. Let's do that one. Start off with this puppy right here. This is the one we're gonna start using. And you unscrew the holder right here. Take that off, pop it in. Make sure it's all the way down. And there you go, we're all set and ready to go. And this basically, as you power it up, let me plug this in right here, plug it into the back. Turn it on. And it should take a few seconds to start getting powered up. There you go. And you see the error message? That's quite common because the handle is not plugged in. It is very common to get an error. And let me tell you right off the bat, you're going to get the error if you don't have it plugged in. And at first, you may get an error for a little while until the handle and the tip go through a calibration inside the unit here. It has to do its own calibration. It says so right on their website that you will get an error for a little while until the calibration takes place, until the initial heat up and cool down of the tips, etc. So that's a normal thing. Don't freak out. Don't go crazy. Perfectly normal right there. All this explained on the uh, sales page itself. And this unit does have a little bit of a guide right there to tell you exactly how to plug it in over here. So it only goes in one way. There you go, we put that in, and you can see that it starts jumping around, and that's perfectly normal. It is calibrating the tip over there. Let me give it a few minutes to do some calibration, and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see there that after a few minutes, it has stabilized, the error message goes away, it has done a proper heat up and cool down of the tip itself, because it'll jump around. It'll go up, down, up, down, up, down, and calibrate the tip itself. So it's already calibrated, error message goes away, I have it set to 350 there, that's the maximum that it goes to, and it'll jump around a tiny little bit, it'll stabilize even further as you use it, but that goes to show you right there what's going on. And to get into the menu, all you have to do is uh, click right there, and it takes you, well that's the temperature, sorry, you have to click and hold, and it'll take you into the menu, and you can select all the different things that are in there, as far as temperature, time of day, uh, passwords, and all sorts of different things. You can select the tips you have, all sorts of different things that you can go through in there and get it all set up and customized exactly the way you want it to be, including the language and so forth. So that gives you some idea what's going on inside that menu. Then you hold it and out you come back to the regular menu. And there's two different types of menus. This is menu number two and menu number one, which is the one I showed you previously, which only shows you the temperature and nothing else. This one gives you a lot more information, the temperature, the time of day, the temperature around you, the tip itself, et cetera, et cetera. A lot more info on there in case you want to see all that. So the thing is, this is already preset and it has a few different co uh, convenient features already built into it. It does have a sleep mode to protect the unit and protect the tip that you're working with. So basically, if you let it sit there for a while and you don't do anything, it'll turn itself off. Or first of all, it'll reduce the temperature to about 100 degrees Celsius. And if you wait even longer, it'll turn itself off completely. The way to activate it again, you can select that in the menu where you do it manually, you do it uh, automatically, or you do it just by shaking it. I have it set just to shake, which is much more convenient. So if I let it sit there for 10 minutes or more without doing anything, it'll go into sleep mode. I come back, all I do is shake the tip, and it'll start heating up all over again, and that way it's ready to go. I don't need to bother with it. That is the simplest way for a novice and someone that just wants to pick up and go not have to do a lot of fancy smancy stuff to get going again. So this unit basically heats up and is ready to go right off the bat. And you can see the numbers over here where it's basically heated up. 
and see now you can see even better where it's fairly stabilized around the 350 that I have it set at. Within a couple numbers, it is constantly heating and cooling. Obviously, you're losing heat to the environment around you. So it is constantly monitoring and adjusting and changing, but is getting much more precise as time goes by. So that's your calibration there. Nothing to freak out or get worried over. So let's find out. How is this unit for a beginner, a novice, a mid-grade person that just needs a quick little soldering around the house, uh, circuit boards, uh, something broke, some wires you need to solder? How good is this soldering station from Banggood? Let's find out. I have a couple of pieces of wire here, and I'm just going to do a quick test. Let's put these two together, and I'm going to solder it and see exactly how it performs. So let me set these up, and I'll get this going. Okay, so I put a couple of wires together here in the helping hands, and I'm going to solder these right now and see if it works, how it works, and uh, is this a good tool? So the question that I'm working with is basically, is this a good tool for a novice and anyone up from there to be able to just pull it out of the box, plug it in, and start soldering right from the get-go, right with the factory settings? Of course, the more you know, the more you can customize it and make it exactly what you want it to do. But... Even somebody at the bottom, can they start off by plugging it in and starting to solder? So this is the setup I have right here. Because most of you guys, my viewers, are mostly DIYers that are just doing stuff around the house, getting things going, just fixing something, a loose wire, a circuit board, something that you need to fix, get it going, and be back up and running in no time. So I have the station going, we have some solder, the tip is heated up by now, and we're going to see exactly what it can do, how it will perform. How will it heat up uh, these wires and solder them together? Let's see right now. So let's see, get the tip going here and start doing some soldering. First, you start off by heating up the wires, obviously, and that way you want to be able to get enough temperature on the wire so the solder will melt. So let's heat those up first and then see what the solder can do. And this is electrical solder. You can see that right there. And there you go, seems to have done a very nice job. Really easy to spread the solder, heats it up nicely, no problem, get it all over the wires, and you're all done. Easy to go, easy peasy. And here you give you a closer look of the wiring. It's all soldered up and ready to go. Let's pull it out of there and see what we did. And can you pull it apart? Nope, it's nice and tight together. The solder is holding it very nicely. And we have some very nice penetration. So that's a good job with that right there. Very good penetration of the solder. So that did a good job right there. All right, guys. So there you have it. A user requested review of the Kesker T12 STM32 soldering station from Banggood. I think this is a great soldering station for any user from beginner level on up. It's easy to use and comes ready to use right out of the box. It seems to be good quality, nicely built, has a lot of adjustability and customization for anyone who wants to do some soldering. You can use it as it comes preset from the factory, or you can customize it and make changes as you get more proficient with soldering and want to customize the temperature and other features to your own requirements. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye for now.